So I've watched Mandalorian finale twice this morning. I'll be watching it again. I'm going to be giving my spoiler-free and spoiler-full shorter normal-sized video today. Stick around. <laughs> Okay, so good morning, everybody. It is still morning. No, it just passed noon, so it's good afternoon. So, as I said, I've watched already The Mandalorian Season 2, uh, Episode 8, Episode 16 overall. The Rescue is the name of the episode of The Mandalorian, and this is the season finale. So, I will be giving uh, my review of it, um, just how I feel about the episode in general. Then I'll give you a, a point to say stop, and then I'll point... I'm not going through a whole detailed scenario of the episode like I usually do just pointing out a couple of points about it and I'm going to try to keep it short for a change so again hit like subscribe really appreciate it here we go okay so anybody who's around my age group that saw Star Wars in 1977 in the movie theater and Empire Strikes Back in the movie theater and then Return of the Jedi you know I'm sorry I didn't like the Ewoks you know if I want teddy bears i'll go see teddy bears to me i went at, even at age 15 i knew that that was not what i wanted when i wanted to go see a space battle but that's the direction it went and then they came out with episodes one two and three and i tried my best to forget about them um seven eight and nine again convoluted mess everything always seemed to not reach the full potential of what we all wanted star wars to be and then I saw the uh, the animated series, The Clone Wars. And the first couple seasons were okay. Then it really got into it. And I'm like, wow, this is this is really well written. I liked it. And then ended season six. And then Disney picked it up and did season seven. And season seven was just wow. And I watched Rebels. The animation took a little time to get used to. and But it was still well written. And I'm like, this is, this is potential. This is more in the direction of what we always wanted Star Wars to be. Not all about merchandising. And I got worried, okay? I got very worried when I saw the beginning of Mandalorian and they got the baby Yoda. I'm like, oh, great, merchandising. Uh, merchandising, merchandising. Well, the real money from the movie is made. So <laughs> thank you, Mr. Brooks, so much for that line. I loved it. Um, but then the season grew, and Mandalorian season one was really good. And then season two started off a little slow, and as anybody knows, episodes five, six, seven were great, and then episode eight. Here we go. What did I think about it? I loved it. This was exactly where we all wanted Star Wars to be in the core of our hearts. If you're a, tr you know, and I'm not, anybody doesn't like it, I'm not calling you not a true Star Wars fan, but most true in their core Star Wars fans had a hard time breathing during this episode. Okay, they they were blown away with the tie-ins and the storyline and the seriousness. Uh, I mean, it took itself seriously. And this is a 10 out of 10. This was, it gives me great hope for Star Wars going forward. And I can't believe that this is, you know, this is happening. And I'm getting teary-eyed again. So I'm. That's my review. It's it's a ten out of ten. It's wonderful. Take the time. Uh, watch it. Make sure you watch it all the way to the end of the end credits. You won't regret it. And go have some fun. Okay. So here's the end of my spoiler free. I'm gonna be going to spoiler full. This is your chance to turn it off, but not before you hit like, please, 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 and subscribe. Okay. So I take it anybody still here wants to hear some uh, wants to talk about some things about the episode. Holy crap. <laughs> when they were on the bridge, I mean, I had completely forgotten everything that had happened in the first seven episodes when they're on the bridge and they got the thing, you know, the, the, the dark troopers pounding at the door. I'm like, how are they going to get out of this? What are they going to do? I'm not even thinking about reinforcements. And then one ship. And you think I freaked out when I saw Slave 1? Holy crap. <laughs> when I saw an X-Wing fighter... <laughs> 
I couldn't breathe. I, I had to pause because I had to go get tissues. I'm freaking out. Like, they're not doing this. They're not really, really doing this. I know everybody was saying this was, you know, the most logical choice, but I'm like, but they can't. They can't possible. By the way, in case you didn't know, that is actually Mark Hamill's voice. It was Luke. Okay, first the X-Wing, and I'm like, well, there's a lot of X-Wings. <laughs> Could it be Ahsoka? Could it be this? Could it be that? And... He lands, and then you see, and they're very, very good about the, the camera views because they're kind of black and whitish. And the, the, the glow of the lightsaber, it just looks whitish on the screen, so you can't really tell. You're like, who is that? It's, you know, it's one lightsaber, but it's white. Or could it be Ahsoka because she lost one in the battle? I'm sure she dove down there and got her thing back or used the force to pull it back out of the water. And then they show a, a view of somebody from behind with the robe. I'm like, well, Obi-Wan wears a robe too. You're, you're coming up with every possible scenario why it can't be Luke. And then you see the green lightsaber and I scream like a little girl. <laughs> okay. And then you see the black glove and like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, was that amazing or what? <laughs> oh, so that, that was great. Um, one thing that I, I disagree with on this, and I hope that somehow this message gets back to Favreau and back to Filoni and back to all these guys. It's already part of canon. Bo-Katan does not have to defeat or even fight Din Djarin for the Black Saber. She didn't fight Sabine Wren for it. <laughs> Sabine said, here, and <laughs> bo <-Katan> took it. <laughs> so if a Mandalorian says, I am giving this to you because I want you to be the leader... She's already taken it in the past after, uh, so why wouldn't she take it again? Okay? They're going to have to explain that. I mean, and can it, can it just be an arm wrestle? I mean, I don't see that they have to fight to the death. Anyway, uh, that's going to be have to be uh, resolved in Season 3, which I heard that Season 3 was going to drop on Christmas Day 2021. But Disney doesn't like to put two series at the same time. So, did you see the end credits? Did you see all the way to the end credits? <laughs> all the way to the end. <laughs> the Boba Fett, the Book of Boba? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? And it says, coming December 2021. So they're going to put two different Mandalorian series, uh, series on at the same time? Are they that confident they're going to have that many streaming shows that they can start doubling up? I don't mind. I think that they're, you know, maybe they will back the Mandalorian back to October again. I don't know. <laughs> but I freaked out again there, too. Uh, one thing, though, uh, that I, I noticed, and I want to I want to get your reaction to this, and then I'm going to sign it off. Um, we know that Grogu was rescued from the Jedi Temple during the part, you know, during the, the, the greatest, you know, killings and everything else. They're killing younglings. Anyway, <laughs> they're killing younglings. Um... I think R2 saved him because, you know, he was very nervous about going with Luke, very nervous about anybody that he didn't know. But then he saw R2 and he like, hey, and R2 starts freaking out like, hey, they know each other. OK, and if Anakin went from um, went to the Jedi Temple, he didn't walk there. <laughs> OK, he flew there. And I'm pretty sure that means that R2 was there with him in the ship. <laughs> okay, so R2 was at the Jedi Temple. R2 is not, you know, he's a good guy. He's, he, yes, he's going to listen to his master, but at the same time, he knows when his master is doing something wrong. <laughs> and he's kind of a defiant robot anyway. We, we've known that since 1977. And I think that he's the one that snuck Grogu out. And who we gave Grogu to, I don't know. But I'm sure he had to do something like, uh, I got to get back there before I'm noti they're noticed that I'm gone. So here. But I think he's the, R2 was the one that stu stuck out Grogu. And that is amazing. And that they're going to have to touch on in the future. Because they wouldn't have even made it a point to say that he was snuck out unless, you know, they were going to expand on that. So R2 is going to be a kid. R2. Luke. <laughs> Still freaking out. I got to go watch it again. And if you get a chance, go online and look at people's reaction videos. So that way you can see them screaming and, and freaking out. So you know that we're all in this giant geek world together. And it's great. <laughs> so, again, guys, I'm going to be getting another video up for some unboxing. Uh, either today or tomorrow. I just wanted to get this out there. Thanks so much for joining me. Go watch that video again and again and again. And as always, I'm out. <laughs>